Some time ago, I had the privilege of meeting an old Buddhist monk in Chiang Mai in Thailand. Attracted by the immense light that leaked from the temple near a lake covered with lotus flowers, where he had just reached eternal enlightenment. I asked him if it were neon, incandescent, halogen, xenon or lead. He told me, I already have a ladyboy who bleeds my finances, only high efficiency lead bulbs. Struck by the immense oriental wisdom, back here in Molise in southeast Italy, I immediately replaced the circular neon chandelier in the kitchen with the cheapest brico ceiling light. For less than 10 euros with an E27 socket suitable for a standard LED bulb. Energy saving. Before proceeding, I procured a set of needle parkside stone bits, mammoths and electrical wires. To operate in total safety, I disconnect the main meter. To interrupt the flow of electricity throughout the system. To remove the old chandelier, simply remove the cover base. Disconnect the electrical cables and remove it from the hook. Obviously the procedure may differ depending on the model. I first arrange the electrical cables in the attic. I prepare two single mammoths and connect them to the two wires that come out of the attic in such a way as to facilitate and isolate the connections of the electrical wires. Mark with a pencil the points where to make the holes for the supplied anchors. That will be used to fix the base of the light fixture to the ceiling. I choose from a set of needle parkside stone drill bits the one of the appropriate size for the dowels. I.e. the 5 point drill, simply by comparing the base of the drill with the diameter of the outer plastic part of the dowel. If the tip is decent even with a small rechargeable portable drill you can make the holes easily and precisely. But you have to be careful not to drill the area of the ceiling where the cables pass. While for those who want to limit the dust just use a vacuum cleaner while drilling. I insert the external plastic part of the plugs into the holes. The ceiling light I bought does not have the wiring so I proceed to make it. I prepare the electrical wires for the connections. By convention we use the black or brown wire for the phase. The blue wire for the neutral, and the yellow-green wire for the earth. Strip the electrical wires at one end by incising them slightly with a cutter. Removing the piece of sheath with pliers and shortening the part of the cable without sheath. To the length necessary for the lamp holder terminals. In such a way as to limit the presence of uninsulated portions of cable.
I insert the phase cable and the neutral one in the respective terminals and tighten the screws. Usually near the terminal it is indicated whether it is the phase or neutral one. But in any case the phase terminal is the one that connects it to the central contact of the bulb. I connect the earth cable to the connection prepared by the manufacturer on the base of the ceiling light. Even if the old system does not include the earth cable, but I prepare it anyway. I put the supplied fireproof insulating braided fiberglass sheets on the electrical wires of the phase and neutral. I cut and strip the cables at the ends to be connected to the mammoths previously prepared on the floor. Reassemble the ceiling light by passing the wiring through the housings and holes prepared by the manufacturer. Not being able for the moment to use the earth cable, I isolate it. Using a phase finder screwdriver, check which phase cable is and whether it is controlled by the switch. If it is the phase cable, the bulb inside the screwdriver lights up. I connect the ceiling light cables to the mammoths of the respective ceiling cables. Before screwing, it is advisable that all the cables and mammoths go inside the base of the ceiling light. And make sure that the eyelet for the hooks of the heavier chandeliers, if you do not want to eliminate it, remains outside the base. But in each case subsequently covered by the glass cap of the ceiling light. I fix the ceiling light to the floor using the dowels, screwing the screws to the external casings inserted in the holes previously drilled on the floor. I screw in the lead bulb. I turn the main power switch back on to test everything. I apply the glass cap by screwing. The two screws with knob heads and plastic washers supplied into the threaded holes provided by the manufacturer. Usually in the kitchen there should be a level of illumination as uniform as possible. From 300 to 500 lux and in particular on the worktops of at least 500 lux. But the mobile lux meter application has detected on the table about 260 lux. So it will be necessary to put a bulb with double luminous flux compared to the current one of about 700 lumens. Or another light point of similar power. It is important not to confuse lux and lumens because essentially lumens measure the constant flow of light that comes out of the bulb, while lux measures the ones that actually reach the eye. I decline any responsibility for any damage to people, animals and things, as the video is for entertainment purposes only. Thanks for watching the video so far. I hope I have been helpful and pleasantly entertained you. If you haven't already, comment, share, like, give a super thank you and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for the support.
Bye-bye.